there will be times when you're developing your applications that you'll want to save a large amount of data. And one of the best ways to do that is through using SQLite database. Now SQLite is automatically included with the Android operating system. So we're going to just do a real basic database where we're going to create a database, we're going to write some data to it, and then we're going to read some data back just to get a feel for how databases work and how they're structured on uh, SQLite. Now our app is not going to have any type of a user interface, so we're going to be working in the code and checking to see whether the information that we're saving is actually going to the database and then we're going to read it back in again. In our Java code, the first thing we're going to do is to set up an SQLite database. And to do that, we're first going to create an instance of the SQLite database. So here we're going to create an SQLite database. And so I need to import the SQLite database. And it's going to be called DB. So from this point forward, when we're referencing our database, we can use DB. Now open or create database. This will let us check to see, first of all, whether there's a database that's already open. And if not, it's going to create it for us. And the name of the database is specified here in the first set of double quotes, which is, uh, in this case, MyDB. So it's going to look for a database called MyDB, and if it doesn't already exist, it's going to create it. And then we have how we're going to, how this database can be accessed by other applications, or if it's just going to be this one. So I have this set for mode private so that it's only going to be available in this application. And this last option is a factory property which we're not going to use, so it's just set for null. So now we have a database, and the next thing that you need for your database is a table. And the table is going to contain your fields of data and the records. So using an exec SQL, or an execute SQL method, it's taking as an argument an SQL command. So inside the double quotes here, this is an SQL command that says to create a table if it doesn't already exist. And the name of the table, we're calling funny names. And then we're setting up the fields of information that's going to go into the table. So the first field is going to be email. And then this is the data type. So we're saying it's a var car or variable characters. First name, variable characters. And last name, variable characters. And next, let's add some data. We'll add the first record to our database. So again, we're going to use the execute SQL again. And it's going to take another SQL statement that we're going to put in to tell it to insert something. OK, so in our execute SQL, this is our SQL command of what we want it to carry out. And it's going to insert into the funny names table these values. So we're just putting one in so we can test and see if we can create our database and then read information back out. So we'll start out with their email address, and then the first name, and then the last name. And the one other thing we'll do is when you're finished working with your database, it's good form to close it. And that will make sure any unwritten data is actually saved to the database. OK, so now I'm going to run this. And we won't see anything displayed in our user interface. Well, we won't see anything in our user interface unless we have an error. So I have a problem in here. So I'm going to go back in and see if I can figure out what's going on. So I'm going to use my log cat, come in here, and SQLite returned an error near the parentheses syntax. So I need to check my SQL statements. That will tell you that there's something wrong with your SQL statement. And um, so it looks like I have one too many parentheses in here. This one is closing this one, and this one is closing the opening part of the method. All right, so let's save this. And we'll try running it again. All right, so this time it runs without any issues, but we don't see any content in here. What we really want to see right now is if it made our database. 
So to see if our database has been created, we're going to go into the DDMS, and that's where we can access the content of what's on the emulator in this case, or if we had an actual device, we could see the file system on our device. So I'm going to choose the emulator, and I'm going to open up the data folder. And then inside there is another data folder. So I'm going to open that. And then I'm going to scroll down and find my app name. So I have my funny names database. And if I expand the databases folder, then there you can see my database that was created. Okay, so back in our Java file now. We know that our database was created. Hopefully we had no errors with inserting those into the funny names. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to read some of that data back out of the database. So I've just commented out those two lines so that we don't recreate the database or have to go through that again or add um, another record of the same name in there. So now to retrieve data from our database, I'm going to use the raw query method. And the raw query method is going to return a cursor object with the results of our query. And then we can iterate over that and look at the results. So here's an example of our raw query method. So we're going to say on our database, we want to use the raw query method. We have a SQL statement here, select everything from the funny names table. And that returns, as we said, it returns a cursor object and we're saying that that is now C. And that allows us to access the results of the query. I guess before I go on, I have to import in the cursor, right? And then when we get our results back, we want it to start at the beginning of our results. So I'm going to move this to the first position. So I can say C, move to first. So then it will be at the beginning of the results. So then it will be at the beginning of the results. And now I'm just going to print this out to the log cat screen so that I can see just that it, I'm able to access the information from my database. So I have a log statement. I'm going to need to import that. And I'm going to use the getString method. So I'm going to say on our query results, which is C from our cursor, getString method. And we're going to use the getColumnIndex method from our results to say uh, we want to get the results from the email. So we're going to print out the email address. So I'm going to save. And again, I'm going to run this. And we're going to watch the, the log cat at the bottom to see if we get our email to display. OK, now that's not what I had expected to come out. So again, I'm going to go up to the beginning of where they started to get the error messages. And we have bad request for field slot. Uh, number of rows equals 1, number of columns equals 3. So number of rows would be the number of results. And the number of columns would be three, because we have our columns are our email, our first name, and our last name. So in other words, it's having trouble finding what this column index is. It doesn't know. Yeah, it says row one, or row zero, column one failed. And that, I think, is because I have a capital M for email. And my field name is email with a little m. So this does show you that it is case sensitive. So now let me save this. Let me clear out these results. And we'll try this again. And there it is. That's more what I was looking for. I was looking for the email to be returned. So we created an SQLite database object named DB. And then we said, if it doesn't exist, create it. And this is the name of the database to either create or use if it's already there. We're setting it so that only this application can access it. And then we just did a basic creating a table with three fields of information in there. We inserted a record into it. And then we used the raw query method to execute or run an SQL query to get results from the database.
that result gets assigned to C. This moved it to the beginning of the query results, and then here we're just printing out the value of what we got for that particular record or result.